Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best-selling author, and the only three-time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the good fortune to be joined by Jason Sircone. Jason helps thriving professionals and entrepreneurs maximize the authority builder the authority building power of the podcast medium to accelerate brand growth and increase visibility. We are obviously huge believers in that. Jason, thanks so much for joining us. Seth, thanks for having me. Looking forward to speaking with you today. All right. So let's go back in time just a little bit. How did you get started? I started podcasting in 2015 and I know that podcasting had become sort of a thing, but I don't think it had really reached the mainstream velocity that we're experiencing with podcasting today. So I got my feet wet, dove in, learned that I was pretty terrible at it, and I really had to work at it and did a few shows of varying success and then decided to take a year and a half off and just study. And I listened to other podcasters. I listened to newscasters, radio personalities, pretty much anybody that was communicating with an audience through some medium. I wanted to see how they were doing that and how they developed their voice and how they were captivating the audiences that they were speaking to. And that really made a big difference. And that led me back into starting another podcast. And then when COVID hit, I was in the process of making some transitions with my business anyway. And the COVID pandemic forced my hand and made me do it a little bit sooner. But I'm glad that it happened because I was able to start working with people with building their own podcast or being a quality guest on other shows, because depending on what your brand needs really are, you can make an impact on both fronts. It's really just a question of what you, what you want to accomplish. Absolutely. So why podcasting? Why are you such a big proponent of this media? When I was in college, I had a radio show and I absolutely loved it. It didn't get very far off campus. The the big claim to fame was that it reached my mom's office. So she told me that everybody in the office would turn their radios to my radio show every Friday. So that made me feel good. But it was a great experience. And I lightly tried to pursue it after college and realized that it was a little difficult. And then fast forward to 2015 when podcast, when I started my first podcast, I immediately fell in love with being in front of the microphone again and having this ability to talk through the audio format. And then that's just evolved over years, over the last seven years, as I've been podcasting myself and helping others, I see so much value in this medium and there's so much that can be accomplished if you do it right. Absolutely. Why do you think it's so important for business owners and professionals to either host their own show or be a guest on others? You're missing out on a major connection to your audience if you don't find at least one way. Now, if you want to do both, you absolutely can. In fact, I encourage anybody that has their own podcast, they always want to grow. That's always the number one question that podcasters have is how can I get bigger? How can I get more people to listen to my show? Go on other podcasts, be a guest, find other podcasts in your space that you can collaborate with. That gives you an opportunity to connect with a new audience each and every time. And you network with those other hosts. You can bring them onto your show. You can talk about different guest opportunities from the people they talk to and you talk to. It's one of the best digital networking tools that you can get your hands on. So whether you're a guest, whether you have your own show, or whether you're doing a combination of both, maximizing the ability to network 
every single time you do a new podcast episode is huge. It's something that no brand should overlook. Absolutely. I agree 100% there. Um, are you still podcasting yourself these days? I am. I have a show called Evolution of Brand, and we do new episodes every Tuesday and every Thursday. I connect with entrepreneurs and professionals across the globe to hear their stories, get some inspiration about how they were able to overcome obstacles and ultimately reach the level of success that they define for themselves. And then they also supply some tackle, tactical strategies so the audience can take those initiatives and apply them to their own practices and hopefully get some results from what they're doing. Absolutely. So you've also achieved a lot of success for your clients. Can you give us an example, someone who came to you, kind of what their issue was, how you're able to help them, and then like the magical transformation that occurred? One of the biggest, I, I would say in regards to a victory was, I, it, one of the big things I love about this line of work is helping people make those breakthroughs. And I think a lot of people come into podcasting with a preconceived notion of how this is going to work for them. And they hear 50,000 people on Instagram or on any other outlets say, this is what you need to do, but you really can't experience that true growth until you do it yourself. So I had a client who I was able to take from that, I'll call it a little bit jaded in regards to this is going to take me to the next level overnight and I'm going to be this instant sensation. But as we set those expectations and some realistic goals and then started executing on them to see the progress being made over time, because podcasting is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's in pretty much impossible to get instant results because you have to consistently produce quality content. And doing that, you are getting better at your craft and you're giving the audience something great to listen to each and every week. That's going to keep them coming back for more and then recommending your show to others. So helping my client make that breakthrough to where they were not just coming at this thinking, I'll do a few episodes and be a gazillionaire and the audience is just going to show up at my front door to walking them through the process and helping them get better at the craft and make quality content. And that led to some great things in the long run. And that's really what it's all about. Absolutely. Your passion is obvious. What do you like best about what you're doing? The fact that I get to be in front of the microphone and this, I, I mean, to me, this is second nature now, talking over the microphone into the computer screen. We've gotten pretty accustomed to doing this more so than years past. But even before COVID, I was doing podcasts in this manner because I was able to connect with people across the world. And I, I love that ability to be able to connect with people all over the world. And then in regards to helping people with what they do, that's one of my big passions. One of the big things that gets my juices flowing is seeing somebody else accomplish big things with their show when they make those breakthroughs because we're applying some simple strategies and then executing them with precision and patience, watching them win and be excited about that win. That's huge for me. That keeps me going each and every day. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent there. What are some of the biggest mistakes you're finding that your clients are making that you're able to help them fix? I think it, and it, depending on which air or which way they're coming at this, if they're looking to start their own show, I think it's starting without a plan. It completely throws somebody off if they just buy a microphone and get, and, and just hit play and, or hit record and start putting things out there without having a long-term plan. That's going to hurt. And I speak from experience. I did that with my first podcast. And I look back at it and say, well, if I could go back seven years and talk to myself, there's a hundred things I tell myself to do differently, but you have to learn. And now I can take everything that I've learned from my own experience and teach others how to do it right. I would say the biggest blight on podcasting in general is people get so fixated on download numbers that they cost themselves real opportunities to grow because podcasting, as I said a few moments ago, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And the only way you are truly going to grow an audience is if you consistently produce quality content week over week, every other week, whatever your schedule may be. When people start to fall in love with you, they start loving what you're putting in front of them. They are going to keep coming back and they're going to recommend it to others. But so many podcasters want that to happen immediately and they instantly go to that download statistic. And if it's not high enough, which in reality is just an arbitrary number, 
they walk away. They say, well, this isn't working. I'm not going to be in podcasting anymore because it's not delivering me the results fast enough. Yeah, they, that, they pod fade. You're absolutely it, right. Yeah. And that's there's so many shows out there that have faded away after just a few episodes. And I think the obviously there was no strategy in mind, but I think people get frustrated when results don't come instantly. I will spoil the party right now. There are no instant results. You have to build your audience with quality content. And that's to me, that's much better because when people do discover you, now there's this whole catalog of content. So if you're on episode 50, and that's when someone discovers you, there's 49 other episodes for them to go back in time and listen to and get caught up. And if you really make an impact, that's what people will do. So the tip that I give every podcaster is not to get hung up on that download metric for just this week's episode, but look at your entire catalog because it's always going to be growing because as new listeners filter in, they're going to take advantage of every show that you have available for them to listen to. And then I'll say real quick from the guesting side, the way that people reach out to be a guest on a podcast usually sucks. It's usually unprepared. It's a quick shotgun approach. There's no real value to it. And that probably costs a lot of opportunities to be on good shows because most podcasters would see that type of pitch or presentation and just discard it because there's no real value in it. I agree 100%. For our folks who are watching and listening and like to learn more about the things that you're doing, where is the best place for them to go? Come on over to jasoncircone.com slash sharkpreneur. And you can get access to my masterclass. It's called Five Things People Fail to Do Before Becoming a Podcast Guest. And that's a good way for us to get started. You can get a little bit more of a feel for what's going on in the guesting space. And you'll be on my website so you can take a look around and see what else you discover and fall in love with. Awesome. Well, we greatly appreciate your time. We know it's incredibly valuable. This has been Seth Green with Jason Zircone of jasonzircone.com. Jason, thanks so much again for joining us. Thanks, Seth. This is a great time. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for watching or listening. We'll talk to you or see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727 727- 888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.